So we're, we're going to throw it over to our third segment of the week, our rotating segment. This week, we're talking about some hot takes. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, I've been watching through many, uh, many uh, Marvel movies, and I have been keeping you all updated in a text chat in our, our Discord about all my thoughts and feelings, and I have developed some very, very spicy takes over my time. <laughs> But I don't want it to just be all about my spicy takes, so I know you all have prepared some spicy takes as well. But just to just to kick it off, what do you all think is the best MCU movie? I mean, if I I, I still think that to this day, uh, uh, Winter Soldier is probably still my favorite one of all time out of all of them. Is it is it weird to say Infinity War? Will that be like cheating? No, no, no. It. It's a it's a it's an MCU yeah. film because I like Infinity War way more than all the other ones, even Endgame. I think Infinity War like the way that had the story beats and everything was just really really, really well done. That's fair. You like what you like. Or I would go with Civil War. It'd be one of the two because I like Civil War as well. Yeah. My favorite by far was definitely Captain Marvel. <laughs> and I I'm not sure if it plays into, you know, the order I watched everything in because I did go through timeline order, not release order. Uh so it was, you know, the second movie I watched, but it was honestly, you know, just fun, lighthearted, very beautiful women <laughs> and a fun story. So Captain Marvel is is my spicy take best MCU movie that I've seen. I, again, I haven't seen them all. Fee, uh, what about you? Uh, <laughs> um, I want to. I want to hear what Fee's favorite Marvel movie is. What is it? That's tough for me. Like I feel like, and I see that. Like I said this when we were talking about it over at the Penultima Conquest. It's like. I always, like, resonate with, like, one of my, like, f- like the introduction to, like, the newer Avengers, which would have been, like, Iron Man. Like, Iron the first Iron Man movie, because it wasn't, you didn't know what to expect. It was, like, they had the Spider-Man movies, they've had, like, the X-Men movies, but that was different. And then they had, like, brand new, like, Robert Downey Jr., like, to this day, him standing in front of the explosion and not looking back at it, like, that's a pinnacle for me, because it was, like, and, yeah... And just, like, the Lonely Island song, um, Cool Guys Don't Look at Explosions, like, he just was, like, the <laughs> pinnacle of that for me. Um, I did really enjoy um, Guardians of the Galaxy because there was a lot of, like, co- comedic side to it and, like, a lot of comedy and, like, a lot of, like, working together as a team. Like, yeah, there was a lot of, like, struggle between the characters, but it really, like, brought everything together. Also, Groot, absolutely freaking adorable. And just, I think, like, the overall banter that they have in those movies in guardians of the galaxy i like a little bit more than the slightly more serious um just like the earth pe- like so like i guess i would include iron man spider man at this particular point um but yeah there's like there's a lot of different elements but i would probably say those two are strong contenders for my favorite frank what about you um thor the dark world Oh God! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what I like, I like the Thor: Dark World. It's my favorite Marvel movie ever. I don't think anybody Sorry. should ever talk bad about it. Natalie Portman did an amazing that. job. Um, Chris Evans was amazing uh, as right. as yeah, yeah, Captain yeah, America that's, that's in that that's movie. That's legit. Um, and Kat Dennings is my celebrity waifu. No, literally the only good thing about that was <laughs> Thor. Like literally, Chris Hemsworth made that Oh, please it. take that bait. <laughs> oh yeah, Chris, Chris, uh, Chris Hemsworth with those abs pretty much made that. Oh yeah, shit, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 No, joking aside, uh, Civil War. I like Civil War. Civil War is one of my favorite movies. I hated yeah. it at first because I really liked the Civil War comic, but as I've grown to distance myself from from the movies and the comics, I will say Civil War 
in its uh in its purest form is just so good. Yeah. It's 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 a very watchable movie too. Nice, nice. Um who is y'all's favorite characters? Because mine is Goose and I will die for them. <laughs> Is that the cat? Yeah, it's, it's a cat. cat. Okay, yeah, it's like. I, like, sure. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure it was yeah. a cat. I was like, yeah. yeah. It's Florian or whatever. Florian, yeah, yeah. Scratch yeah. out yeah. fucking uh-huh. Nick Fury's eyeball. Yeah. By the way, did you uh, so you, you watched uh, WandaVision with us or you watched it at the same time? Did you re- realize that the little mm-hmm. girl was Monica Rambo? I did not. I spent the entire time I was watching WandaVision asking you who people were and why they were important, and yeah. none of you would tell me well, because you, of spoilers. Well, now you've seen the movie, now you know who that person is, then, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, it's me more excited for uh, the Marvels. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. for that as well. Because I, when I watched when I watched Captain Marvel, I didn't I didn't like it very much. I was I was like I could leave it or take it, honestly. Uh, but. That gets me excited now for the Marvels. I mean, I, I brought it up when you were first getting in sort of the uh, this little text chat that you had that Captain Marvel is by far my. I'm sorry, damn it. Captain America. <laughs> Captain America. Captain Marvel <laughs> is the best. Thank you. God Thank you. <laughs> Captain America is my favorite character in the entire MCU and my favorite story that I felt got a pretty solid, complete ending. So. That is my my character. Yeah. I'm going to be real honest. I was only in the Captain America storyline for Bucky. Um, like I've said to all of you many times privately, but I have to reiterate it on the podcast. Bucky is fruity and you cannot convince me otherwise. You cannot look at that man, especially in like the 30s, 40s, and say that he's not getting all the ladies and all the gentlemen all the time. Have you seen that man? He's. You have to kind of be. He's so fruity. So fruity. (laughs) 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 Bucky. Um. I think, especially with the newest show and kind of seeing like a different side, I would probably have to say Wanda. Right now, Wanda is definitely one of my like, and I know I'm saying like I'm not trying to be like oh like one of my favorites, but it's like I you need to think there's hundreds in the MCU technically, yeah, not absolutely. just like what's on the TV, like not what's in the TV shows and the movies. There's like the the actual like universes plus their alternate universes. Like you could go on for days talking about it, but I think like in currently in the MCU like visual universe on screen i'd probably have to say the scarlet witch is definitely up there um just because of like her specific background and kind of seeing like the struggle that she went through and then just like the mental lapse that she had and just like the complete and utter like this is what happens when like you've lost literally everything and you try to find a way to protect yourself by creating this alternate reality um because you can't handle what the truth is and what life is actually like put in front of you that she built this entire like like this ecosystem and even though yes i know for a fact that she held people hostage at the end of the day and she recreated her husband technically um and just all this other stuff but i think it was a really good representation of like it did she handle it well not particularly, but I think it was just an overall, like, good story arc. And honestly, holy crap. Just the acting in it was phenomenal. She... And, she sorry, sorry, go. Oh, no, 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 continue. I was gonna say, she... She surprised... She wowed me in that series. Mm-hmm. The way that she acted. Like, that was just... I, I didn't expect that from her. Especially from previous films. Yeah. And it was just one of those things, like, dealing with, like, PTSD and stuff like that. The way that she, like portrayed and stuff it was just like i think she nailed it and just, i'm really excited where her story goes next yeah really, and i really think excited. one thing that got me really excited for her anyway is like knowing elizabeth olsen and realizing like what type of shadow she had to live through her entire childhood up until like her getting the role of the scarlet witch is absolutely bonkers because at one point she was going to change her name like there's been interviews where she's like i almost just changed my name and then just had no association with my sisters and then now she's like, it's 
kind of hand in hand with like the actual character themselves and also the actress like seeing all this growth come into one character has just been phenomenal so also she's a strong female role which thank like i was excited for because not much of. <laughs> there's not much of in at least the visual like arcs and especially with some of the female roles coming off is almost even forced i think she was a really good like representation of like losing your family and you're like from another uh, other than just a bunch of the men in the series like i'm not saying like there's no like i love thor yeah. like loki's super awesome and like a bunch of these other characters as well but it was that was what we needed i i am excited yeah. for uh jane foster to come back into the series uh specifically with the next one because it sounds like they're gonna be putting a heavy focus on her in the movie yeah and then she might actually get her own series too Hey, because why, yeah, awesome. yeah. Why not? They need more, more strong leading women. <laughs> That's one of my Sever, major criticisms. Sever, so Gret, far. Paltrow, fuck her. <laughs> yeah, <Fair>. yeah. No <laughs> more honestly, group. Honestly, and my thought process right now is like, if they could get some more like interesting female characters, because some of them are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we got like five yeah, like, coming, which I'm excited for. Right? We have. Is, are they still? Are they still doing the Black Panther with? Um, we don't know the premise name? of uh, Wakanda Forever. Well, yeah. Wakanda Forever. Yeah, but we we are getting. I know because I, I know she was it. She was in hot hot uh, hot water for a little bit there. Oh yeah, yeah. The actress. So like I do, yeah. So I don't know how how they're gonna do that. We'll, we'll and I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at this uh, doc right now uh, slide. Uh -huh. He said Killmonger yeah. should have lived a thousand percent. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. That is not oh, a yeah. hot. Scene I that don't know killed. why they kill Killmonger. I don't know. I don't think he's dead. He I, he I is think he's dead. the most. He is probably the most appealing villain other than Thanos in his movies. He, I, I would go as far to say he was the most compelling villain out of any of the movies I watched. Like, and the he, he I, was like, I mean, sorry, I, I, my biggest problem with back Black Panther, which like acknowledging all the good it did for the industry, you know, introducing so many roles for you know black actors and you know behind the camera, et cetera, et cetera. I just. I, there's so many stories about like black suffering in the media and they could have had an opportunity to like tell a story about black joy. And I think that would have been way more compelling, especially coming from the MCU being such a huge powerhouse in the film industry. And I feel like they could have done so much more with that story. I, I get it wasn't the tone they were going for at that time within the like MC rollout, whatever, whatever. But I, I think Black Panther would have been better as a story of joy. And I think, like, even just, like, having Killmonger get that, like, redemption and growth would have, you know, helped helped its case a little bit more. I'm having a feeling that I don't think... I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to straight out say, I don't think he's dead. Because that last trailer... Totally not dead. The last trailer they showed, which was, like, sort of like a welcome back to the movies, they showed the scene of Black Panther and him looking at each other, and they called them brothers. I'm just like... To me, that's mm. like setting up like, all right, mm. are you gonna? Have but the thing is, we're talking, to, we're to, talking to, about to comic me, books. People don't stay dead, you know. Come on, Fair. but to me, <laughs> but to me, a, like we have a Loki show which has a character that is officially dead. And he's we, not dead again. Like, there's so many. There's so, especially after watching Loki happened before everything. Loki no, no, no. He, that, this is, yeah, yeah, he's he's a universe hopper. But uh, with all. The the shit that happens in an, uh the in was it Endgame yeah Endgame, uh in terms of just like we could have butterfly effects based on what's happened in like you know and all this they have effects from the snap now that we've seen um there's so many different effects that happen post and like from that Endgame event that like it's insane how many opportunities they have to bring back characters that are either dead removed or were not done justice. It's it, we we we're gonna see Killmonger again eventually. Um, the, it's the just thing, a matter of time at this point. The thing where I, where you guys say that like it was he was in, he was in the the trailer and stuff. I think that was just them saying like this is look at your brother, look at your sister. I don't think that had anything to do with I know, but still Come with on. the movies because like we'll it was see. after we'll that. See. It was after that when once they started showing Black Widow or uh, Black Widow, yeah, Black Widow. 
Who's also uh, dead. Shang, uh, Shang-Chi. I mean, but that's a prequel, right? So, uh, and then they showed, um, oh my god, Eternals. Oh my god, fucking excited for Eternals. But but all the other movies and stuff like that, so. Excuse me, it's The Eternals, not The Eternals. Eternals. Sorry. Get I'm around. excited for Shang-Chi I, okay. and Eternals okay. because I don't know anything about those characters, and I want to yeah, experience too. something new in yeah. the universe, so I'm cool with that. Exactly. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for The Eternals. So, like, there is a, something about that. How the way that, that, that movie, it looks like it's shot, very intrigues me. Like, it intrigues me so much because it seems like they do, like, they, they went, like, the more natural lighting instead of, like, the the cosmetic lighting what they do for most for most movies so they wanted to get like the best yeah. shots because it just feels like it's different for some reason it just looks different okay i have a couple more <laughs> questions for y'all so my next question is what is one change that the characters made from like comics to the mcu that you will forever be upset about because mine is the fact that hawkeye is not deaf in the mcu because that would have been so cool to have like deaf representation in such a big movie series and to see that being taken away is like really heartbreaking for me so i wanted to know if you guys have any other characters that have a aspect of them changed that from the co- mix that you wish was in the MCU. Spider-Man relying on Stark tech. That's the one thing mm-hmm. I don't like at all. Um, mm-hmm. Peter Parker yeah, is a great I scientist. He makes he made his own suit. He made his own web shooters. I don't like that they're crutching or kind of pushing up, pushing him way too forward with the whole like Tony Stark stuff. I feel like Peter's mm-hmm. always been the broke kid using broke ass technology, but making it seem like it's crazy, crazy good. Um, to the point where even Tony Stark was impressed instead of now he's kind of just using Stark tech and you know, he might be modifying it himself a little bit, but at the end of the day, Tony Stark still made most of what Spider-Man's using right now. I absolutely agree with you for sure. I honestly, with this question, I don't necessarily know if I can properly answer it because whenever I've had like an issue with something, somehow they would always address it later in another movie and fix it somehow. Like uh, Mandarin was one mm-hmm. where I think everyone had a huge problem for, but it wasn't to like mm-hmm. the Iron Man 3 DVD where they're like, well, that's not the real Mandarin. There is a real Mandarin. And then now we actually get to see mm-hmm. him like years later. Um, so whenever I feel like I will have an issue, Kevin Feige, and if people like talk about it enough, Kevin Feige like, he listens to that and then somehow rectifies it later. So oh, yeah. I honestly can't say what I'd be like, hey, what's different? Um, I'll If you guys keep talking, I'll continue to think about it. But to me, like I've enjoyed everything that they've told me in terms of their changes. And I just think a lot of the changes ultimately make sense. But um, again, mm-hmm. we also still have like a whole plethora of stories that they're still going to come. So who knows? Uh, you know yeah. what? I'll say uh, other than uh, well, no, because it's outside stuff. I wish the Runaways was part of this universe, and it's not. It pisses <laughs> me off. <I'll> say. <laughs> I don't read comics enough, so I don't. I don't know. I'm just really excited for uh, the X Men to get introduced into this universe. That's I can't wait till Fantastic Four. I think that's going to be the first step of integrating uh, the X-Men into it. And I'm just so excited to see like what they do with like, are they just going to retcon everything or is it just going to be like a continuation? I don't know. I'm, I'm so excited for it. Here we go. Here, here it is. I figured it out. Uh, the uh, Netflix shows and ages of shield are canon. Fuck. I don't care what you say. <laughs> Valid. What, a, what about like, what about like days of future past? <laughs> that hasn't existed yet. So I don't know. <laughs> no, not, those, not that movie. I'm talking about the Asian Shield and the Netflix. Uh, no, Daredevil. but that's what I mean. But but what about like Wolverine, the movie? Does that exist? Is that canon? Well, not yet. In a, in a universe. In a universe. A universe. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. They can always write like, it. Is that part of the Fox yeah. universe? Well, yeah, but you could always write it off as like a universe. You can call it like what's the numerical numbers for Fox? Like, I, I you can call it Universe 316 or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, because it's 616 for the, like, Marvel, like... Like, main universe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is kind of, like, I agree with what Mario says. And the problem, like, and some... It's not so much a problem, but it's the way that they've been able to kind of change things from the comics is because they've systematically put 
the Fox and Sony as well as the just the standard like MCU in different universes and they run in different like specific ways that way. So I can't be upset that certain things with like the Scarlet Witch didn't happen because it didn't happen in this universe. Like it didn't happen in 616. Um yeah. I that's fair. There's so many like there's a lot of things that I hope they bring um, like introduce in the future. And um the reason why I'm just coming back to this topic is because I noticed this was something that you actually wrote down a lot is like there's a lot of insanely great female characters that have not been introduced yet. And we're hoping like in like in the future they introduce a lot of those as well as just characters they like both men and women and non-binary and robotic that they haven't been introduced or spirits. It honestly shit gets crazy in the MCU. Like we can't even like shrug. Um, honestly, I can't, vampires. I can't wait till we get vampires. I'm so excited. Oh, we're there's, getting vampires. Dude, I forgot. There's so many, there's so much that happens. And I think it was really great that Stan Lee just allowed for these, like, this multitude of representation acro- like across his particular like and ima- like honestly bringing everything into like this these universes and allowing whatever anyone wanted and changes and all this other st- i i wouldn't say that there's anything that's in this show or l- the movies that i'm upset that wasn't in the comics because like i said it mm-hmm. It changes. It's there somewhere, just not yeah. on screen. <laughs> a lot of them are surprisingly. When I think of a lot of the great uh, female characters in Marvel comics, I tend to lean more towards the X Men side. Yeah, mm-hmm. you have characters like Jean Grey. You got characters like Rogue. You got characters like X Twenty Three. You got characters like mm-hmm. uh, Kitty. Um, you have so many cool characters in those. Like, they like, always have their own kind of big leadership role in mm-hmm. in those Storm. comics. St- uh, yeah, Storm. Um, I'm trying to think of like what, like, uh, have you ever seen uh, Daredevil yet, Sly? Because Elektra was pretty no, good in that one. Not. Yeah, I mean, Elektra, I haven't seen any other TV shows. Like, right, like, I mean, like the fact that in the future we're gonna have Miss Marvel, uh, She Hulk. Uh, we're also getting uh, Hawkeye, uh, Kate Bishop version is also gonna be joining yeah. the world. So, I mean, oh, and yeah, the, the new I, Black I know Widow, it's to come, but Black it's Widow. been you know like ten years, and we have so few. Yeah already there that that it's just kind of disheartening Sharon I'm, I'm excited <laughs> they do her so dirty oh trust me what? So enjoy dirty. your sh- oh yeah yeah keep watching enjoy your viewership <laughs> of uh falcon and the winter Shoulder, yeah, the keep soldier. Watching. oh no yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, that's my um and then i just wanted to end with what my biggest takeaway from watching through the marvel cinematic universe is I noticed that so, so many of the characters in these big major lead roles in these stories are disabled. And, like, I get that you're trying to tell, like, this big blockbuster story, but the fact that these, these characters aren't, you know, addressed as being disabled is an absolute shame because it could enhance their stories so much and make them so much more well-rounded and be, like, this great representation for folks out there. And, like, I just really wish they had a little bit more balls to actually call their characters disabled and write that into their stories. And I've I've heard we get, you know, more of that in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which I'm really excited to see. Um, I should be watching that next week, so we'll see where I'm at with that next time. But I just, like, I wish they did more in these, like, in the canon films with disability representation and, you know, not just brushing it aside, like, you know, Rhodey gets injured and then, like, instantly, basically, is walking again and they just, like, barely touch on it. They could have done, they could have done so much more and been a positive representation of disability in these heroes, in these stories. And honestly, that's my, my hottest, hottest take for the MCU so far. Yeah. Well, no, that's why I kind of liked the like seeing WandaVision because it showed us firsthand, like as some like honestly, 
I'm not going to sit here and like everyone has gone through some sort of trauma and the way that people like handle it and the way that they address it varies. And obviously the way that she dealt with it and a lot of people do this and it doesn't mean that you create an entire town and kidnapped people mentally and caused huge amount of, amount of chaos and created a huge dome over your entire town. But for people who have lost loved ones or have specifically dealt with <laughs> loss in some way, which she's lost everyone. She lost her brother, her husband, her like her friends, because at this point, and her team. So she's lost pretty much everyone her, she knows. Plus, she's lost her parents. And a lot of where she stems from, like, her comfort is from shows that she used to watch with her family um, on the block. So it's just, you kind of see it. They don't say specifically this is what your problem is or what her problem is. But it's just her kind of breaking down throughout the series and realizing, like, I've lost everyone and I don't know how to handle it correctly. And the way that she did it was a security blanket. It Was it a chaotic mess and caused everyone to like feel like for weeks or months or what however long she was in there we don't know how long she was specifically in that particular dome but yeah there are I, definitely ways that they could have addressed it overall like not specifically with that but with other characters but i feel like that was a good representation of just loss and how to handle it was it yeah do i think I, it was handled was, well no yeah, I was so high on WandaVision up until around episode six when they really start, you know, the themes of like psychosis and the manifestation of a psychotic break were like really getting heavy handed. And then I was like, oh, I can see this not being handled too well. I And I don't think they did a great job wrapping that up at the ending, especially like, you know, you know, she manipulated and abuse you know that entire time and the so he heavy-handed gaslighting with vision like the fact that that's how the series kind of played out really brought me down on it which is unfortunate because i could see they were they had such good content there and they were trying and they just didn't didn't bring it home for me I, especially that she didn't really seem to have any consequences for her actions and yes 100% her trauma her loss her PTSD explains her actions but just because we act in a way because of you know what we are experiencing doesn't uh forgive our actions and it can explain it but it does not excuse and i feel like it the show kind of goes pretty far as to excuse her actions because of what she experienced um i, I, I didn't know what she was doing I get, I get i get where i get where you're coming from Sly. i really do like all like what what you're, what you're saying I, I just don't think you can do that in a limited show or in a movie it's just i feel like that stuff well, you just it's so hard to do the story is not get that across the, the well, thing is wanda story, didn't oh, but know the, what the she was people doing in that in that in that, in that uh town the, their story's over we're not gonna see them ever again no but we don't know about the the reputation of the scarlet witch right now <laughs> is in tethers we don't know. She's yeah. not really. She didn't do a very heroic thing, and therefore had to go on the run. And is in a cabin. The last time we see her, she's in the cabin, touching a very bad book. So it's yeah. very possible that she's going to continue to go down that road and hopefully find redemption in this Doctor Strange film. So we'll yeah. we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and I think I, at the po oh, oh, you continue, Frank. I I, I keep mentioning it, but like uh, it's very much inferred that Wanda just doesn't know what she's doing. In that show, yeah. the like, it's just a manifestation of her. You see those themes emerge right around that episode six, where the gaslighting gets really heavy-handed. I, you can like see in her brain, she's starting to slowly piece together what's actually going on, and that's again, that's where my problem started to start with. That is her just like completely shutting out any inkling that about what's it, going on. Is it more gaslighting or the sense of cuz if you if you remember what happens she just literally like has a like she her powers implode and that's just like 
that could be inferred that that's how somebody of her caliber or power t- like she's lost control of her powers but, uh, and she doesn't know but, that and by the time you get to the point where she's she's starting to realize things she still doesn't know it's her but she's willing to accept it because it's good it's better than accepting the the opposite of which is vision's dead but there are mission, there are parts of the specifically sh- I, I, so I just want to clarify, I'm specifically referring to Wanda's conversations with Vision, where Vision is like, hey, something more is going on here, like something's going on with these people, and you can see her start to kind of figure it out, but completely shuts him down and shuts him out and gaslights Vision specifically. That's what I'm talking about yeah, here. She's aware that it's happening, she doesn't know how it happened. She she yeah, yeah she doesn't know how and she doesn't know she did it in, like, like you're credit like you're saying Frank she's willing to go back into the trance of sort of like yeah going it's a stage of ocean. grief well and yeah no it's not, and I think like her what she was specifically doing wasn't trying to like gaslight him it was more like she was trying to convince herself that everything was fine she's just like no everything is fine like everything is great like. We are in a like a place that we're super safe and everything is fine and you're not dead and I didn't lose my entire family and I didn't lose like everything I thought I loved and cared about. This is our life. And this is our life. Like this everything is, is fine. Life. And yeah. it's so like yeah, it ca- like the way that she was coming off is like trying to like l- as you put specifically like gaslight him, but at the same time it was her trying to convince herself that everything was fine because mm-hmm. like trying to push like her issues underneath a rug which shockingly was putting pushing her all of her problems underneath of a dome she convinced she didn't know one at the beginning she didn't know like you said she didn't know anything was happening and then she started to realize what was happening and then she was thinking like well me convincing myself like if i was her me trying to convince myself like hey everything's fine everyone beneath the dome is okay everyone here is safe everyone is protected by me so i'm okay they're okay everything is fine and then she has this constant like internal struggle which you kind of see by the way if you don't want to hear any spoilers because i'm about to start talking about spoilers just you've already this. spoiled wandavision at this yeah. point <laughs> okay okay i'm sorry what i'm saying we put, we yeah, please put a warning, put a warning. Yeah, we'll put, no warning what she specifically did was when like agatha started to make her live through her trauma mm-hmm. which was seeing her parents Such seeing a good episode watching the show which by the way i watched that dick van dyke episode it's It's pretty interesting yeah um so like seeing her go through that and then having to like go through all these steps of grief and having it like essentially pushed into her face was it's acceptance yeah it's It's the final stage because like honestly like i know for like talking from my experience as someone who lost like my father figure and like people that were really close to me like you try to I honestly, I didn't handle it very well. I tried to push it through, like, try to, like, push it down and then, like, watch content. Like, I used to, like, binge more shows than I could even count and then just do whatever the fuck I wanted. And I didn't really specifically care. And with her, it was trying to build this, like, comfort. And did it affect other people? Yes. But in a way, that's how some people handle their trauma. And I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not condoning it by any stretch of the word. But. When you think like, hey, everything is great. Like, I might be treating you like trash, but everything is great with me, so everything is fine. Or it's trying to convince others that like, well, this is the particular path. Everything is great. Um, And I think the way that she was doing it was more on the lines of trying to convince herself in the long run. Was it okay? I don't think so. But at the same time, she definitely needs to talk to somebody. (laughs) Which I think was yeah. essentially her, like, going, even though Agatha's the worst, but I love her song, like, mm-hmm. pow- all the power to her, like, her trying to face it, like, Agatha was evil, but she made her face her problem. She's just like, this is what you're doing right now. Sit down, and you're going to go through all of your trauma, and we're going to figure out how you ended up here. Um, and Absolutely. Yeah. And, like, I-, I have no problem with how they portrayed Wanda going through her grief and processing her trauma and repressing it. Like the way they did that was great and, you know, can be super accurate and it's, you know, something so many people experience and it was great to see that portrayed. I just felt like the, the show was trying to excuse that behavior. And that was the vibes I was getting from the show. 
And so that's where my problems were. Like her actions and her characterization 100% felt like genuine and valid and how she would experience her trauma or n attempt to not experience that trauma. But when the show started to be like, hey, look, it's okay because she has trauma that she did all of these things, that's when my problems with the show started to happen. I definitely think that – I think you can be both right and wrong on that. I think it's, it can go both ways because I certainly didn't see that way. I very much like this is a fucking problem the whole way through. But I can totally see how the show could kind of like be hand-wavy and it's like – Oh, it's a little bit of this, mm -hmm. and then now we're, mo we're moving on. I can totally see how that can come across. Um, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Man, was it fucked up, though. Yeah, honestly, mm -hmm. they treated it as though, like, she was, like, the living epitome of it's quite uptown from Hamilton. Like, <laughs> they just, like, have yeah. pity on her. And wave. Like, exp yeah, explain, like, just recognize. And I think that's almost how, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. handled it as well. Which was, she like she went through shit, and then obviously they reprimand like they detained people that they needed to, and then they're just like, we lost Wanda, but you know what? There's other things that we need to worry about, and she's gone through a lot. Should she have been detained? Absolutely. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I think, um, yeah, honestly, that was that's uh, that's my TLDR. She was treated like it's quite uptown from Hamilton, and if you don't know what that is, go listen to it. It's a song, that's and that's the explanation of it. I, I do wish that they would do more for like that kind of stuff, but I just feel like when it comes to the MCU, finding that kind of like more, like trying to figure out what the problem is of, it's not the place to go. I feel when it comes to that kind of stuff, like but I it could be, it could, but There's I so just much don't. Potential. This is also, this is also <laughs> you guys. You you also have to know this is a Disney thing too. So like I don't see I don't, them doing this I don't kind of thing. I see that to be true, especially about with when we just watched Falcon and Winter Soldier when it tackles some pretty fucked up things about <laughs> no, no no spoilers. No, I'm, I'm not just saying the themes. I'm just saying the <laughs> themes. Uh, you know, and racism okay. in America. I just don't. Yeah. I don't believe that. I think that this is actually they're tackling things pretty heavy. Uh, head on and i think that overall personally to me i think they did a good job but i can see where people can have faults with it i think that's just probably the mm -hmm. end all discussion right you can both it can both be bad yeah. and good absolutely yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely okay yeah. does anybody else have any final closing thoughts about the mcu yeah my favorite character is howard the duck Fair. Oh, yes, so, yes, yeah, so. yeah 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 when he showed up in that postcard he was great and at the end my of favorite, game. speak your truth yeah, yeah. my favorite character truth. is the redstone the red stone. <laughs> the red stone that right. inside of Jan, uh, Jane Foster. That's weird. Yeah. How would you want that? Mm. That's my favorite character. I'll take it. Uh. All right. <laughs> all in all, hey y'all. Guess what? The MCU is pretty. MCU is pretty great. Who would have thought? I know, right? By the way, we learned that it's always as if it's been around for ten years. <laughs> it's almost like we learned that you were what nine when it started. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, Iron Man came out in 2008, which means I would have been nine years old. God. So just just let that sit with you for a little bit. Make you feel a little extra old today. God, I experienced every waking hour of every waking day waiting for each of these movies. <laughs> and I watched most of them in a week. <laughs> it's like how I watched well, Sons of Anarchy. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> on that note thank you all so much for sticking with us through this crazy wild episode we have had today uh before before we head out before we go let the people know where can they find you what have you been working on what's going on i'm gonna kick it over to fee first what have you got going on well my goodness you can find me here you can also find me on Twitch every so often. Um, I'm trying to get back into that. But you can find me on Twitch and on Twitter at Zoranix, which is found right here. Wait, right down here. Um, <laughs> and you can also find me on um, Speaking of Stadia, where I talk about Stadia. And you can hear all about my thoughts about what I talked about today and me not trying to get a little bit more angry about it. Um, but yeah, you can find me in those places. Um, and yeah, that's where what I've been doing. 
Uh, Frank, what have you been up to? Where can people find you? What's going on? Um, I was taking a small little weekly break from, from streaming because I wanted to play other games. Uh, but this week I will be streaming for sure, 100%. Maybe some GTA, maybe some Overwatch, we'll see. Uh, you can find me at Twitch, at Kestrel1A. Uh, you can find me this week also at the Large Popcorn Podcast, hosted by our good friend Iso Christian, at Iso Christian, uh, where we'll be talking about some horror cool. movies. That's this will cool. already be this already be recorded and hopefully released. By then, I want to hear but uh, by the time people hear it, but uh, we'll Ooh. be talking about um, some movies, possibly one of Evil Dead nature. Um, and then um, great movies, great movies. You can find me at uh, Point in Progress, where I don't tweet at Point in Progress, and you can find me at Twitter <laughs> at Castro One A. I mean, do we? I, uh, I set an audio thing, and it just does the thing now. I don't have to do anything. Does it? Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you can find me at Twitter where I post random clips of my games where I kill a man. Love that. Love that. Mm-hmm. Arf, where, what have you been up to? Where can people find you? What's going on? When All does this things. go out? Uh, this goes out Monday through Wednesday? Yeah, your announcement will be already announced Tuesday. by then, too. It's already been done? Okay. Sunday okay. So Tuesday. you can find me. You can find me on twitch.tv slash beer in the hair. Uh, you can find me on Twitch, uh, youtube.com slash beer in the hair gaming. And you can find me on patreon.com slash beard in the hair, which my Patreon will finally be launched after all of this time. And I can, I'm so nervous. I was like, this is, bef- this is recorded before I was launching. And I'm very, very nervous at the moment. And I don't know, like, I am just like beyond nervous right now. And like, thinking about it just makes me want to vomit. <laughs> But it's like, gonna be great. <laughs> I'm calling it now. Hundred Patreon supporters within a week. Let's do oh, it. Let's oh go. my god! Let's put the pressure on you. Oh <laughs> god! Don't do that. Because like, do we need I, lofty days. goals. <laughs> lofty goals. Like, oh my god! Yeah, this would be posted after your announcement. So that's yeah. Exciting. So like, I, I have a goal for if I hit a hundred patrons, I would do a weekly show of but the news that's gonna happen. That happens for gaming wise and it's gonna be like a 12 minute 10, 10 to 10, 10 to 15 minute video that i would post heavily edited and just kind of going through all the stuff and like that kind of type thing so like oh i am nervous but i'm excited at the same time and uh i can't wait i can't wait so yeah patreon.com slash beer in the hair hell yeah your banner right, looks Mario. the batter looks amazing yeah. thank you fee and Wonder who shout, made out that. To, <laughs> shout out to a craft for gamer lady for putting out the the tier images as well. So mm-hmm. she, they, you both killed it. You both killed it. Very cool. <clears throat> I love that. I love that. Mario, what have you been up to? Where can people find you? What's going on with your life? I have uh, when I'm not recording uh, me reviewing Mortal Kombat on my YouTube channel. I actually now am launching a full-on project. I actually dropped the trailer earlier this week, had a lot of people respond to that. It was really cool. And uh, I will be doing my new project, Halo Forever, where I will be playing Halo literally forever. I'm going to be playing level by level (laughs) with a guest every week, a new guest, up until the release of Infinite. And uh, that will be releasing on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Time where you can catch it, and the first episode, is, I've already recorded a bunch of episodes, so it's all done, so that's awesome. Uh, it is going to be, the first episode is Peter Hunt Spitek, who was formerly of Dual Shockers, and uh, my good old buddy, so uh, definitely check that out, and uh, check out Peter's stuff. He's uh, he's newly left uh, Dual Shockers, and he's uh, a really rad dude. He's too good looking, and uh, he's a musician too, so uh, it, he can't be stopped. Literally, he cannot be stopped. Right. And twitter.com slash that Mario Vera. <laughs> always, always, all the places. Right. All right. Thank you again so much for following along with us. Again, I have been Sly. You can find me all over the internet at SlyCloneMC, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure to check out all of the Point Progress stuff, our, all our socials, our YouTube. Subscribe on your favorite audio RSS catcher etc etc thank you all so much for sticking with us and as we say at the end of every single episode killed him progress has been made